Hello and welcome to Torg's Day Night. I am JM, your GM. We are here on the Ulysses International Channel and we have a very special one-shot for you. Tonight we are running a simple run, a prelude to the Pan Pacifica arc that the Horsemen will be embarking on next week. But tonight we have very special guests and I'm going to let them introduce themselves after I give them kind of the intro. So Pan Pacifica, as you know, is the cosm that has... It's hard to say taken over uh, or invaded. It's insidio insidiously uh, subverted many of uh, uh, the nations in East Asia. Uh, the got to pull my notes up. Uh, the Kanoa Corporation has uh, recently saved uh, many of these nations from a uh, a strange malady that was producing. Uh, zombies and other sorts of, uh, of strange mutations and has since been hailed as the savior. But the Delphi Council knows that not everything is as it seems. And so through uh, Maru, one of their agents in Pan Pacifica, they have contacted a group known as Bureau G to go and uh, enter into the uh, Nanjing Corporation, a subsidiary that has been uh, absorbed by the Kanoa Corporation, in order to recover some artifacts that have some uh, eternity shards that uh, are reportedly being studied at this remote and very secure location in Shanghai. So before we get into that, let's introduce our special guests for tonight. We're going to start with uh, uh, I don't know where he is on the screen, but he is somewhere here. We're going to start with uh, Mark, who you know is Anton and Archibald uh, from the other tour games. Uh, Mark, introduce yourself, give us uh, the name of your character, give us a little bit of background so that everyone in, in, in the chat and uh, in Bureau G knows uh, who you are and what you can do. I am playing Kano. He's pretty much a gun for hire, started his career uh, in the Kanawa Corporation and then left and got picked up for his special abilities uh, in the Bureau, uh, namely shooting people and breaking in. Uh, you may recognize him from uh, Friday nights on the Iconic Production channel. Uh, Josh is a, our guest tonight. It's his very first time playing Torg. Uh, normally he runs the, uh, our fifth edition game, but Josh, can you introduce your uh, character? Tell us their name and kind of, uh, as you understand it, kind of, because we built him, what, like a week yeah. ago? I totally remember everything that you told me. Um, <laughs> I am uh, Leopold Decker, AKA Frenchie. Um, I'm from the cyber papacy. Mm -hmm. I worship machines. Um, <laughs> but the machine in all of us. That's right. Um, <laughs> I'm, I, I suppose I am here uh, because uh, the something's up with the Kanawa uh, Corporation and uh, they're messing around with uh, tech that I uh, want and want to worship uh, or incorporate into me, which is the same thing. Basically the same thing. Um, yeah, I, I have a bunch of drones that I send all over the place. And uh, from the pregame uh, uh, assessment, I might be, I might have the most uh, toughness. I was not planning on being on the front line, but uh, you are, you are one toughness shy of the highest in the group. Oh, fantastic! You're number two. Welcome to being a tank. Perfect. <laughs> yes, I built a character around stealth drones and uh, fooling retina scans, and uh, apparently, I'm going to be in the front. So, um, you may not be able to recognize him uh, due to. <laughs> being an international man of mystery. Uh, but uh, we're gonna go with uh, uh, Restart here, who you will you may recognize, I, I don't recognize him, but you may recognize from the B team where he plays Malachi. Uh, go ahead, introduce yourself, introduce your character. I am Giorgio Asakura, but most people call me Joe the Condor. My parents were scientists to a mega corporation who were killed when they refused to do experiments that went against their morality. In other universes, perhaps I would have been saved by Dr. Nambu and become a member of Gachaman. But in this universe, I was trained by the corporation to become a flying power suited sniper and only recently have discovered the truth about my parents murder 
Uh, you may recognize this next person from chat. It is my pleasure to uh, uh, have Mr. Furious here as one of our uh, players for this one shot. Uh, Greg, welcome. Thank you. My character is a Kuahata Sanjuro. I am an electric samurai, and I have gone as far as one can go down the path of the sword, and I ride my Ishido special into battle to cut down my enemies. And I have no past because I erased it. You erased it. Even I, even I don't know who I am. Interesting. I'm sure that that won't come up in in game tonight. <laughs> and, Surely not. And last but not least, uh, you may know him as uh, uh, v is it VG Greg in the in the chat? VBG Greg, yeah. Yep, and or you may know him because his name is in the book. Uh, welcome to Greg. Greg, uh, go ahead and give us your introduction and tell us about your character. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Greg Gordon, line developer at Target Eternity. Uh, my character is Auditor 17. The Auditor program is a Kano Corporation venture because there's sort of a debate uh, to stem corruption in the subsidiaries. You know, you can cheat customers, you can cheat competitors, you can't cheat the mother corporation. That's right. The auditors go out and check the books, um, but we can do, you know, we can either do forensic auditing or we can use a little more violence to clean up the ledger. Right. Depends on what we find. So you it's, do forensics on your auditing. Yeah, hostile takeovers yes. uh, have a completely different meaning when the auditors get involved. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And there's 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 no sweating behind the GM screen tonight to have uh, Greg on the other side of, of the GM screen. So. <laughs> so, night has fallen on Shanghai as the five of you approach uh, the Nanjing uh, building. It's a nondescript building in downtown Shanghai. Uh, most of the exterior uh, walls and windows have been treated with a, a highly reflective um, surface so you can't actually tell what is a window and what is just the wall it all just sort of reflects the neon of the city as bikes and cars go racing past down the main street all you see is the uh the neon lights kind of stretched out slowly reflecting in this strange uh surface so as we start as i said the 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 mission uh, the, the intent is to find the lab where they are uh, studying these eternity shards. Now, uh, I guess this is really up to you guys. How do you, how do you plan, like, how do you want to get into the building? You have an auditor, uh, so there is the go in the front door and talk it. There is always, you have a breaking and entering specialist, so there's a way there. You have somebody who can fool retina scans. So I'm going to let you know what Maru has kind of passed on to you is that they know that the lab is on floor 15. They also know that that lab is highly locked down. It is not just where they are, it's where they conduct their most clandestine research. There's even rumors, Mara has heard, or Amaru has heard uh, a lot of rumors about this place, but there's even uh, rumors that the Nanjing Corp, they may be working with other cosms and they may be doing it under or away from the eyes of the Kanoa Corporation, which is possibly why Auditor 17 is here. The fact that you can, as he said, you can cheat other people, but you never cheat the Mother Corp. And if they're doing Eternity Shard research for other Cosms, that would sort of be a big no-no. So as you, s <laughs> hey, Welcome to the chat. It's always good to see you. I'm starting to see things kind of filter in. Zero Earth Element, good to see us. Certified to Organic, it was great to play with you last week. So, what is, how do you guys want to approach this? It is uh, after hours. You can see that, uh, you know, the night has come out over Shanghai, so everything is brightly lit. But as you look up, you can bear, it's all, there's so much light pollution that you can only barely get the, the feeling that maybe it's night 17 stories up, but you can't really tell because again, this is 
this is a hyper modern city. And is it? Is there a parking it, garage? Is it business hours? It is not business hours. Okay. It's we, after business hours. To clarify, we're going to recover the eternity charge. Yes. Sam, may I ask you a question? Uh, let me answer. Uh, uh, Sanjuro, yes, there is a parking garage next, like, right next door. Is there one in the building that we can go down under into ground? There is indeed. Mm. Uh, what were you going to ask, be... uh, Joe or Condor? Or, I mean, you gave me like 17 names, man. Or, sorry, not to be confused with Auditor 17. <laughs> Uh, too much is my brand, but also, what is the exterior toughness of floor 15? Because I am fairly certain that if we can breach it, I can, I can fly through it, and if there's a nearby parking garage structure that goes up 15 floors, I mean, yeah, <laughs> go up a certain amount, but we we can just go through the outer wall, baby. All right, so you do have, there is a parking garage underneath. The exterior toughness oh. of the building is, it is, uh, it is advanced, uh, it is an advanced uh, polymer coating, but you're guessing, uh, so I have to an I answer these questions. These are, these are always questions that you get to ask and get answered for you in Torque. Uh, it is 14 with uh, toughness with four, excuse me, four of that being armor. Uh, I'll ask this group, but I would sort of like to go in the front door since I should be able to get in and save our breaking and entering for a little later in the building. Or do that we want to wise. start? That's, That's fine. Because so we need to walk in briefcases a, behind you? I would, yeah, because the idea is auditors are supposed to poke and probe around and find out what's mm -hmm. going on. So it gives you a perfect excuse to wander around. And I can try to get onto the main computer system and actually look at the books while fiddling with any stuff you guys need fiddled with. So Now, we, we know this isn't a normal, I, I guess, run. So is it possible, I mean, they would know, an, would they know that an auditor is coming? No, the whole point of these okay. things is that they show up and they take a look at your books and whatever else they want to. This is okay. this is definitely a hostile move by a, by somebody farther up in the corporate ladder. In other words, they do not trust you. Yeah, if well, an, an auditor, auditor showing up is a very clear sign that someone's head is is on the platter, and a lot of times, like literally. Okay. Like um, I can <laughs> I can walk in with you in case uh, they take a sudden auditor uh, poorly and I can be I guess I it's, it says I can fool retina scans Does that mean I can just make it, the retina scan think that I'm whoever I want it to yeah cool it's, it's, you might so is, is there I need you to get into the lab part where he gets us in the building we go up to the 15th floor yeah oh, we can't get in the lab door and then you can go beep, 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 you know do yeah. your thing but I, I can also walk in is, is this like I mean as soon as you walk in the building you're you're scanned and they know you who don't you know are. All right, so I have Auditor 17 and uh, Frenchie going in the front yeah. door. It sounded so like... Uh, I can go in. I will put it in a briefcase. All right. Uh, Is that a gun? Sanjiro it's, and Joe, are you going in, or do you want to go in through the uh, parking garage? What's... what's... I, uh... I'm trying to figure out how to get my bike to the 15th floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll ride right behind you. I'm, I'm holding on... Uh... Like, uh, Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore, let's go into this parking garage. I mean, you could go down into the parking garage. I do feel like it's well within genre to have the, the elevator ding, and as it opens up, you being there. That, that was exactly what I was thinking. So I, I went to try to ride up as far as I could get my elevator, either okay. there or into a stairwell where I ride up. All right, well, we'll, we'll I start with. I really want to see my cape do this as we go around the spiral of the parking garage. You know, it's flapping behind us. All right, well, we'll start with Auditor 17, and then we'll jump over to the parking garage crew. Before we go, so, how many drones do I have? You got one. You've got, I just have you, one. you got the hard light drone. Yeah, yeah. 
Fantastic. Uh, can I send that one to just follow the other yeah. group? Because it can communicate, yeah. it can watch, it can send me all He's got a, a, he's got a, this hard light yeah. drone just sort of materializes and starts floating next to uh, Joe. And as you take off, it just... And it's extremely difficult to see. <laughs> uh, all right. So anything you want us to know, tell, tell or show the drone, and that immediately gets downloaded to me. Yep. All right, uh, Auditor Seventeen, you have uh, you have two other uh, auditors with you. Kano looks the part of the impending violence, and uh, Frenchie definitely looks like uh, like the bleeding edge of technology. Uh, All right. So when the door is open, I step through. I'm sort of going to pretend to be in mid conversation, talking to these two, just like this is perfectly normal operation. Just yeah, and he's and he knelt down. He started sniffing the pitcher's mound. You can't tell me that's not a gene mod injection. They say it's clean, but there's absolutely no way. And I'm just keep talking. I walk up to the desk and nodding, hold him. Said, yeah, they really ought to change the KBO's name to Menagerie League Baseball or something. This is just completely ridiculous. Oh yeah, by the way, sir, we're here for an audit. Uh, you can have a possibility for that because that was fantastic. Um, as you walk in uh, at. Uh, you know, Auditor 17 is talking to the two of you. You guys can see there's this, uh, the floor is this glossy black marble. Uh, the desk, the reception desk is this massive uh, horseshoe made out of the same material. And as you walk in, the gentleman in, I mean, just the, like, the sharpest suit, kind of, his head comes up and he doesn't so much walk from the right hand part of the horseshoe to the middle, as he sort of zips to the middle and is standing there. And as you approach, you can see that his eyes under the eyelids are chrome. And as you say, uh, they're, you know, they're here, they're here for Auditor, an audit. Auditor 17, I assume I still have the legit auditor's badge. Since yeah, of course. I'm sort of double editing. Yeah. I hand that to him. And unfortunately, I also must uh, mention that I have the, you know, sold out card so i have to play immediately when drawn so some npc ally will inevitably betray us some point during the <laughs> adventure Ooh, and when that happens depending on the level of betrayal you will get between one and three possibilities each <laughs> all right is that what the number the white number at the bottom left no that's just the uh, that's the that's deck the that's the that's okay. just that just tells us what like uh what card in the deck it is okay. uh so if you need to order reorder uh uh, Josh is going to be our everyman. Our, uh, how does this work? Well, let me explain it to you. Um, uh, so you hand the card, and uh, Auditor 17, you can immediately see he kind of uh, grabs the card in a very awkward fashion in the fact that he his fingertips kind of hit uh, the edge that you were holding, so the whole thing rests in his palm. And all of you see this green glow emanate from his hands. The eyes widen. At, at, at once, Auditor, what, uh, what uh, I can have a conference room set up for you. Do you, do you need to be looking at anything? Uh, I will alert the- if you, could, if you could find a conference room next to one of your vending machine break areas, that'd be fine. This is gonna take a while. And I don't wanna have to leave the building while, while it's ongoing. No, I will, I will uh, would uh, floor 12 work for you? Sure. Uh, they, he sends over to, uh, uh, your device, uh, basically, here's the layout of the building, here's kind of uh, the place to go. I will alert the CSO, the Chief Security Officer. Uh, she will meet you there in 17 minutes, assuming traffic. Uh, and, Excellent. like, you guys all know this is an artificial being. You've never seen an artificial being be nervous? Uh, can, can I interrupt and tell him to not notify the CFO? You're welcome to. Sure. Uh, notifying the CFO will not be necessary. He, it looks from you to Auditor 17. Do you give a give a nod there? Like, no, no CSO? It, it's not necessary, but if they come, they, sh they should be uh, ready to be interrogated because that's part of the protocol. It's their choice, of course. Meanwhile, in the parking garage, the first thing we hear is, Wee! I assume, as 
as uh, Sanjur- Sanjuro is is racing through this thing, and Joe is holding onto the back, Kate magnificently blowing in uh, in the breeze. Keep it down back there. <laughs> Uh, so you get to you get to the the uh, the parking garage. It does spiral down, and at at the base level, you can see that there are two sets of elevators. There's kind of the personal elevator, and then there's a large cargo elevator. Both of them uh, appear to be uh, security controlled. Turn around and talk to the drone. Tell them we need the need the cargo elevator in the in the parking garage opened. I, I will interrupt. Uh, in order to bring in some of our uh, equipment for reviewing your files, uh, we need the uh, garage door and then the parking opened. Uh, again, again, you can see the green light on the on the card, and he kind of sets it down and slides it back to auditor seventeen, and the the cargo door kind of opens up. Thank you. There's enough room in we there were- that you can make a tight. Like, you can get in and still have room to make that tight turn so you're ready for when the, the doors open up again. Right. Right. Excellent. We head to floor 12. Wait a minute. Cheyenne, <laughs> uh, is this one of those elevators that might have an escape hatch or a safety mechanism on the top of the elevator? Of course it is. Oh, okay, so it would be possible for me to get on top of the elevator and directly fly up to the 15th floor. If uh, you would like to do that, you are welcome to, do, to, to uh, make that attempt. <laughs> I feel like so, uh, qualifying as an I attempt have, is always the... Can I have the drone have, make the sound <laughs> of an elevator? Okay, I have multiple choices. So, uh... Should I, gentlemen, fly up to the 12th floor and bust it open so that we can then continue on moss to the 15th floor, or should I know that you guys are crazy awesome on your own and just blow a big ass hole in the door? <laughs> On floor 15. I would prefer that that be step two. Step <laughs> one. Would, I, I get that and into their systems, perhaps with the help of Frenchie, and we find out what we can about their security systems before we kick the door down. All right, so this is what I will do, given that advice. <laughs> I am going to talk to Hardlight Drone like it's a real thing. And be like, come with me, hard light drone. We are the first, and we shall arrive before them, and we shall prepare for our friends to have the most success possible. So, the hard, hard light, light drone, drone and I <laughs> will fly together to floor 12 and hover, waiting for the bike, the elevator, and our compatriots. All right. Um, Auditor 17, you can see that uh, this green light starts to emanate from the uh, from the actual stone, and it like starts outlining a path to the elevator for you guys. And soon the three of you stand in this elevator. There is, I assume, Muzak of some sort, and uh, you you have been. Uh, um, uh, you're. Oh, excuse me. Uh, your uh, you are informed that your uh, auditor badge will now give you access to, uh, you know, it is basically like a uh, VP level access to the whole of the um, the facility. How many floors in the building? Uh, there are. Uh, 21 floors in the building. It comes into your, uh, your. am I pronouncing it correctly, Greg? Your uh, Zuzas? Oh, <laughs> okay, yeah. Your little smartphone that has been delivered to everyone in Pan Pacifica? Yeah. So we just hit 15 and go right to 15? 
I, I literally would like to set up command post on 12. Okay. Recon from there for a second and then hit 15 once we have an inkling of what we're getting into. Okay. All right. So, uh, soon, uh, the three of you, the doors open and again, you see the little green light and it is, uh, at first there's no lights on the floor. It's all out. But as soon as you step out, the lights kind of flash on and one of the walls goes translucent and you can see it's actually the wall of a conference room. There's a large, uh, uh, mahogany table, big, heavy, uh, leather, like overstuffed chairs. This is a corporate, uh, facility. You can also hear that, uh, see that, uh, because Auditor 17 specifically requested, like, next to the vending machine, uh, there's a small, like, uh, espresso bar that is completely automated, and, uh, next to that, there is a, it, it, it looks a little bit like a vending machine, but there's nothing in it. Uh, but you can see that there is sort of a uh, metallic, like, roll door next to it. Just saying. That's what you, uh, that's, the, the chat is definitely, it's definitely saying kick all the doors down. So, um, <laughs> the chat encourages the B-team behavior in all of my tour groups. Um, so uh, you you uh, you can clearly see that is sort of where uh, the lights are leading you. The door opens up. <laughs> Auditor Seventeen kind of uh, you can hear an elevator ding, like several hallways down. And as the you you then hear the sound of a motorcycle engine being revved. We're, we're leaving a strip in the leaving a strip in the in the elevator on the way out. Yeah, just and then you hear guys all hear the tires squeal and kind of threading his way through, uh, you assume this is where they grow people. It's a cubicle farm. Um, you can see Sanjiro kind of weaving, and you also see uh, Joe, who is apparently talking to his uh, new best friend, the hard light uh, stealth drone uh, from from the cyber papacy. So soon you are all, you are in this, uh, you are in this conference room, you all like, uh, Auditor 17, from your uh, uh, Zeusus, you can like opaque the windows again. You can make them completely opaque. You can make them one-way reflective. You can actually seal the room for security if you want. Uh, there are a number of access ports on the table where you can plug in devices, you can access the mainframes, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, it's it's a small access port, about two meters across. It's located right below the primary access uh, port. But wait, no, that's that's a different. Can I All right. attempt to use that to monitor ingoing and outgoing calls from the front desk? Yes, you can give me a computer roll. Yeah, you need to take control. And roll then roll. Uh, Auditor Seventeen, what are you doing? I would like to get onto the system. I've got meat space manipulation, so okay. I want to go and see if there are any. Uh, any security systems that are on the 15th floor that I can access, and if so, I'll put them in into analysis mode, so they'll go through and do a security check for the next 20 minutes or so. Okay, so put them on a loop, essentially. Yeah, so yeah they'll, they'll no, they'll be they'll, they'll be a diagnostic. Right? Yeah, they're doing test mode. Um, I have every man questions. Okay, I'll come right back to you. Would you go ahead and make your roll, uh, Greg? Okay. Josh. Okay, so I rolled a 16. Now I look down here. Yep, so a 16 three. is plus three okay. to your to whatever your final value is of computers. So my final value is of computers. Okay, so for, if it's 14, I, I get a 17. You get a 17. Gotcha. And okay. so essentially the way this works is uh, in Torg, mm -hmm. your final value is the most important number. The die will adjust that up and down. Okay. But... You have a like if ten is the standard target number, you got a really good idea of okay if I've got a fourteen on average, I'm always going to beat a standard target number. Okay. Because, but uh, monitoring the incoming and outgoing calls was a challenging task, so it's a twelve. Okay. So you beat it by five, which means you got a good success. Okay. So what that means is generally it's just a better version of the success. So in this case, you can clearly hear. Uh, as you start, there's one, there's a couple of like people working late. Like you, you, you start getting the, 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 like the voices in your head. No, I'm sorry. The boss is really writing me, honey. I know it's our anniversary, but if I don't go, if I don't finish this up, I won't have a job tomorrow. 
that call goes south quickly. <laughs> um, you know, there's there's another guy who's very clearly um, using co- corporate resources for like personal calls. He's definitely seems to be playing some sort of MMO uh, over his office line. Um, that never happens. But but the real thing is, you can hear a a, a, a woman's smoky voice is going th- is talking to the person at the front at the uh, at the desk and it's like no no ma'am no all, all of all of the credentials uh, were were uh, accurate no we are being audited and you can just hear her voice I will be down there in a half hour make sure make sure to activate security protocols on all level six and above projects. And so that will be the betrayal, the sold out, the uh, the animatronic robot uh, receptionist. He definitely sold you out. So I'm gonna give everyone two possibilities for this because it's going to put certain areas of the building on heightened alert. So two extra for you, two extra for you. And remind All right. me what I do with these again. Uh, if you want your die roll to be higher, that's right. And if you want to soak damage. Ah, okay. <coughs> the reality roll. Uh, Greg, what did you get on your roll? Oh, first I'd like to ask, what was the DN? Uh, the DN to uh, put le- uh, floor 15, uh, to access floor 15, was a hard uh, task. So it was a DN 14. Okay, I will spend a possibility because I'm currently at a 17, but I'd like to get a good result. You need to kick control now before they lock it down. Right. So that's is ooh eight. That's twenty two total. All right. Uh, well, that is definitely a good success. Do you want to kick it up to outstanding? Do you have a card you want to play? I unfortunately I have no such card. All right. What were they? What good? do you need? I have an action. Uh, I don't. Well, we're we not in rounds yet, are technically. Yeah, you're not so in yeah, rounds, we, so yeah, I, you, can, you can trade cards, you can do... Would you like an adrenaline, a uh, second chance? So I, I can give Those you... are both good. I always like second chances. I mean, I can give There you go. Action. You can have a second chance. Yeah, he's doing that Great. as well. Oh, he is. Yeah. Various cards are trade similar. Right. Some are restricted. Well, well it's up. Pops up three. All right. Well, with a, with a outstanding success, you start to put this in place and the security measures come up and you put them in uh, in their auditing mode and you still have access to all of the visuals where there are cameras. What you, what you see is that floor 15, they have cameras in the halls and in the common areas, but the labs do not have any recording devices in them. Um, but what you can tell uh, with an outstanding success is that uh, Lab 3 uh, seems to be uh, where they are studying uh, its, its artifact research. Uh, lab 2 is just regular R&D uh, things. And you know that uh, the, the Nanjing Corporation is... is it is a research facility that is working with the Kanawa Corp to continually try and push the boundary of uh, the tech. Uh, so they're 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 kind of helping you know advance the tech axiom. So they're bleeding edge research in electronics. So things like uh, you know the powered armor, um, uh, surveillance equipment, personal electronics, that sort of thing. The other thing, though, that's really strange is Lab 1 has no uh, designation. You know that uh, with an outstanding success on your computer roll, not even a VP level security card will get you in there. And that there is a ton of power and uh, nutrient-rich fluid that is going into that... uh, that lab. <laughs> so there are developing batteries? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you say new bridge. Yeah. I feel I feel 
feel like it's self-explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fluid <laughs> that is... Like nice it's chocked full of nutrients. <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in the Rochambeau of Office Security, gotcha men fist beats VP access anyway, so I think we'll be able to get into that lab one. That is probably very true. So, all right, shall we, gentlemen? Do The only question is, do you want me to remain here and try to set up distractions, or should we not split the party? Uh, one other thing I will, ju I will just say... Sorry about that, uh, Ben. Uh, I will say the other thing that you notice is that there are um, there are uh, security there's security on floors 14, 15, and 16 uh, like uh, actual uh, corporate security uh, wandering on patrols on those three floors. How many? There are uh there are seven of them. What you can tell is there's definitely uh, seven on each floor, if that makes sense. That kind of, I mean, this is a this is a massive building. So, uh, to Auditor 17's eyes, these seven guys are, you know, essentially patrolling what amounts to uh, like a half city block. Uh, so, out of the seven, there is clearly a uh, two who are in um, sort of uh, that you can kind of see are in charge. The guy in charge is definitely wearing kind of the Kalina security armor. Uh, there is also one person who uh, is wearing kind of the eerie mesh armor. And the other guys, uh, uh, they are wearing um, um Try to see what we've got here. The uh, Gosuku armor, the Ion armor, is the what the Ooh. rest of the security force are wearing. So uh, I have a play, gentlemen. Uh, I was thinking about this earlier as one of the choices, but now I realize it is both a choice and a distraction. If you could make your way to the top of the elevator, I would like to cut the. Okay, we need to open the elevator door on, uh, what, 15? That, that's important, okay? But I would like to use the momentum of the falling elevator to propel us forward, and while you guys jump off at 15, I will breach the roof as a distraction. I'll just fly straight through it. And hopefully all of the attention will go to the roof. And if I need to fly back down the hole, at least I made a hole. I'm so just this is the great GM. class elevator approach? I, I will I will adjudicate any plan that you come up with. <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave this to you guys, though. You guys come up with your plan, tell me what you want to do. Do we think that we Perhaps it's time for a um, flashback. Well... Looking at the security patrols, do they go in pairs or are they single? Are they spread enough so it's like one person at a time? Uh, they always are in pairs. Gotcha. Is there a pattern? Uh, not that you can discern in the 15 minutes that you were kind of looking. If you guys want to give me an evidence analysis role, I would uh, I would allow that to try and discern the pattern of the... Does anyone have e evidence analysis? I, I do. do. Ooh. <laughs> With my Listen. current access to communications, is, would there be a way that I could shut them, uh, interfere with their communication? You would have to make a new role for that, because you, new role. you uh, but, basic... But I could access it from here. Yeah. Okay. Because I could so after, my the... after my evidence analysis role, I conclude that they're walking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are definitely I doing 12. that. 12. And as they walk, I describe them walking. And so did they walk. <laughs> Uh, you got a 12. So here's the thing. It is a, at first, uh, with a 12, uh, uh, Sanjuro, you, uh, you kind of, there is a pattern. It is not totally random, uh, but the thing that you notice is that, one, they always stay in line of sight of at least one other team. 
So as they are kind of moving through these areas, they are always kind of, you know, one, one pair of two will stand at the corner of a lab with eyes to another pair, you know, two other pairs of two who have eyes to kind of the other part of the squad. However, there is a blind spot. There is a way that uh, you would have about two minutes in a hallway if you timed it right where no one would have eyes on on a hallway if that makes sense like if you time it right you could have basically two minutes to get a lab open and get into it and close the door before the patrols came back around how austere are the hallways for stealth. I just, I just love the way you asked that question. <laughs> uh, they're sort of picturesque, uh, maybe bucolic. No, um, they are pretty empty, right? This is, this is, uh, this is uh, basically a like a, a Tech Twenty Six uh, clean room. So the hallways are it's like home. <laughs> it's uh, there are uh, there are static fields that kind of make sure all of the dirt. And, and dust kind of dropped out. It's a, it's a completely sealed floor, so the like the air gets recycled there, run through HVAC systems and purifiers to make so sure. No potted plants or Ming vases or. No, no, you would have to go full crock and be like. <laughs> I do have trailing clothes. Fire alarm! The old the old uh, regular security systems within the building. This is a complete fire alarm situation. No? Okay. I still talk to the room. All right, so what's the plan? I, I yeah, hear it. It might be something because I have pretty good stealth, but if there's really nothing. But remember, I, I can always attempt it, but if there's nothing much. Stealth to hide is not behind, just about hiding, it's about moving quietly and moving yes, yes, in, but, in ways to make sure that you are not seen. So, so, uh, your, uh, so uh, Mr. Furious did come up with a, like, he can get you two minutes yeah. in the hallway. I might be able to extend that. If I if I can mess with their communications and actually maybe without blowing a hole in the roof, just direct, <laughs> like, basically send communications saying, "Hey, like, go we, check this door." Yeah, we've got a thing off in this, you know, the opposite corner of this floor, and so I, I could possibly extend our two minutes. How much of a distraction do you need? I would just keep them away from that. Blind spot. Now, in that blind spot, can we get to the lab? Uh, oh yeah. Three? Actually, which, which lab are we going for? Three. We want to go it's three first, right? Three first. Do we really care about what the other? That's labs? a good question. I mean, if that's listed as artifacts, I think that... that's probably where we need to go. Well, but you also have, like Auditor Seventeen. You got any uh, input here? I. I sort of I I understand that uh, we have somebody who wants to punch a hole in the building. I'm you do. Like, like I mean, it seems very clear he definitely yeah. wants to blow a hole in this building. But I could open up some sensitive files. He could come around and break into the twelfth floor, which creates a security breach on the floor I'm in, which I can report, and they'll see that I'm looking at sensitive files. And then while the rest of the team starts to go up, and I can. You know, talk them through the problem, and he can even like break things around me. I can explain the danger I'm in, and that will not look good on the report. And uh, then these guys can uh, can go start smashing up 15, and we'll figure out a way to join them later on. Right. And I say, and I will go up with the other group to the lab floor, and we'll try to sneak up in the two minute window. And if we don't have the two minute window, I buy them the time that they need to get in the door. I, I will let up. you like you'll you can't have your bike on while you're sneaking, or otherwise I'm gonna make those. <laughs> no, <unfavorable>. the bike. <laughs> oh. The bike is gonna um, have to stay stay uh, on the twelfth floor. Okay, I promise you, you will have a cool bike scene tonight. I'm not, I'm not gonna right. deprive you of that. It's not like a silent <laughs> electric bike. So I I like to ask Frenchie to assign the the uh, drone to our. To our costume friends, so we yep. can maintain contact and time our security breach with their uh, about to hit floor fifteen. Okay, so all right, I have Frenchy, uh, Sanjiro, and Kana, Kano. Kano, Kano, Kano going to the 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 fifteenth floor. <laughs> I have Auditor Seventeen and Joe on the twelfth floor. Joe is going to blow up a window, 
and then attack uh, the conference room. I, I think I'm staying on the 12th Are floor. Are you staying on the 12th with Auditor 17? Yeah, I, I thought Auditor 17 and I were on the 12th floor. Yeah, I'm, you can stay there. I don't know if you need to come up or to try to get into the lab. Yeah, no, I, I think you, I'm staying you, with you Auditor might. 17 and sending my drone with them so okay. that they can communicate with us. Was Wait, the okay, I, I have a specific plan for Joe, uh, which is to actually try to draw down the uh draw the security down so as i assume everyone has to take the elevator up to get to the 15th right uh yes i'm sure there's more than one elevator. there are there are multiple elevators there are three in the in the building uh the best thing is is if as that elevator goes up i'm gonna go down and blow a hole in like the third floor and then fly back up to the 12th uh, with uh, the auditor. Okay. And then and then blow out a window. So you're gonna try and get so them to scramble to where two I different. Came from, and hopefully that confuses them more. All right. So here's what I need from everybody. I need stealth rolls from those who are going to 15. Uh, these will be favorable because of the information that Auditor 17 gave you. I need. Uh, blow things up roll from Ben. Um, <laughs> and then I need, I need your trick roll. Trick, not computer. Uh, you're you're in the you're in the system. You are trying to trick them into pulling them away from the one side. Don't you got possibilities, man? That's all. I do have possibilities. Do I have to spend one beforehand? No, you can spend it after. And then uh, Auditor Seventeen, uh, from you, you want to access sensitive files. So can you give me a computer's roll? And I, I can. Will, I will stitch all of these rolls together. Definitely spending a possibility. Okay, so remember, you okay. keep that initial number. Okay. You roll another d20 and add it to that first add number. It. Yeah. Oh, that's so much better than what I thought it was. All right, so, well, my roll is 22 for a total of 19. All right, so my st I have... Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry, jerks. And remember, if that second roll is less than 10, it counts as a 10. Oh, that's so much better. Yeah, five. So you yeah, it counts oh, as a ten plus better. the first number. Cool, fourteen for yeah. trick. Welcome, welcome to Tord. Yeah, that's way. <laughs> like I'm so locked into fifth edition where it's like I rolled low, I'm dead. No, no, you. Yeah. You've got Sorry, all the meta currencies. You spending one? Spending one. All right, so I have nineteen uh, for Mr. Furious. What was your stealth? Twenty. Twenty. I've got a 14. Only because I rolled really crappy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Don't forget, you have a, it's favorable, so you can excuse. Yeah, my first two rolls were two and three. <laughs> yeah, definitely time for a possibility. Um, <laughs> uh, Auditor 17, what did you get? I spent the possibility, my total is 21. <laughs> okay, what was your total, uh, Josh? 14. 14, and then, uh, 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 Joe, what did what did, what what did, what are you using to blow things up? I just need to like I need to see this. Oh, oh really? Oh my goodness! Oh, I uh, I have it here on my sheet. Hold on, that's terrible. I see. Um, I am using. Oh, that's an SC Kyogo T11. Okay. Uh, what did you get on your blow things up roll? Uh, well, I, I'm going to assume that you uh, allowed me to aim. Yeah, sure. So, you know, that seems, I, coming. I'm magnanimous. Uh, that so seems that like something I would do. A 22 shooting at an unmoving door. All right. So we're going to start actually with Auditor 17 and sort of work our way in a circle. So uh, with, a, with a 21... Uh, you have the whole of the corporate files at your beck and call. One, okay. uh, so I will give you just sort of a high level list of things. If you would like to know what you're looking at, I would be more than happy to share that. So you have their financials. I, oh, go ahead. Okay. So my plan is I want to start by opening up the financials and then I want to time when I know that Joe's going to attack. Yeah. I want to have opened up the research section files just prior to that. Okay. So I can call in and say, I just opened up the files. Somebody broke in. 
so I could use some assistance. So that's my plan is to time, start looking at the financials and find out where the money, see if I can find out if they've been sending money to other Cosms or stuff along the way. But I'm really trying to back up Joe's play of making his assault somehow timed with, you know, the fact that I opened up the research files. All right. Should my drone roll stealth as well? No, I'm just going to, okay. I'm going to assume that your drone is uh, translucent. Working with these guys. Because yeah. you got like Camille. Do you want to roll? Because I know you've like built this. No, drone. I just okay. I just wanted to make sure. Um, all right, so Auditor 17, what you discover is right, you're an auditor. You've seen a lot of uh, numbers cooked books. There is a right, there's that we allow a certain amount of corruption, right? We allow a certain amount of cooking. But as you start looking at this, I mean, you got an outstanding success. So there is a lot of money uh, being funneled into um, the Nanjing Corp uh, from uh, Russian and French uh, accounts uh, that are definitely funding this off book research in lab three. Like you're able to kind of like, you know, you blow up all of the files. They're kind of presented before you, and you're like, "Yeah, no, this is definitely there's there are, there were paper trails, well, electronic trails leading back to uh, uh, both uh, Russia and uh, uh, France." Now, as you open up, like Joe is in communication with you, so you open up the research files, and again, you got those three things. There's like advanced electronics whatever's going on in lab one and uh this new lab three is the one that's been recently opened it's only been open about four weeks and uh it is linked to a file that was trans uh transferred out of uh moscow like the, the this the money and whatever is in lab three was transferred out from russia uh joe it's spectacular like you blow a hole in floor three, you then fly up to floor 12, and uh, Otter 17, you definitely hear that second explosion. Okay, so I will patch in at that point to the to the communications of the building. Like I'm calling downstairs and I'll say, um, I've detected and I heard a breach. I've just opened up the security files. This means they're available to anybody to get to this room. So I need security assistance. Um, you don't have to send everybody, just those who want to be employed next week. <laughs> Can I get a intimidate or a trick roll from you here, uh, sure, Greg? Because that was spectacular. <laughs> Meanwhile, what are you saying to uh, the group on floor fifteen? Um, who's he talking to? Auditor He's seventeen. To Auditor seventeen's talking to the main desk. Oh, the main desk. Okay. Um, so the t to the people on floor fifteen, it's coming across as as a lot of static, and then right. This team says, this team's communication to the others says, hey, we need a little bit of help all over on this part. This team's communications are interfering with that and going to this other group saying, hey, we need help over here instead, send a couple. So they're a little bit more uh, scattered, but I'm trying to time some of that for that two minute window. Okay. So right as they were approaching that corridor where he is, then they get the communication and go, okay, shoot, we gotta head off this way just to buy a little, just to pad that two minutes a little bit. Well, the nice thing is, is that with a, even with a 14, uh, none of these guys have good tricks. <laughs> so uh, combined, and then uh, what did you get, Auditor 17? 16 total. Okay, so com with the two of you combined, you guys, the doors open and you start sneaking down and you start to see that shadow on the wall and it goes, Crap, we're being reassigned. The building's under attack, and they head down the other direction. So, uh, Auditor 17, Frenchie, and Joe, I will come back to you. Joe, I assume you're just, like, shooting random <laughs> cubicles, kicking over uh, uh, Tech 26 towers. Uh, all, all I can think of is Charlie from Always Sunny, like, taking off his shirt and just being like, Wild card, bitches! <laughs> <laughs> I think that's uh, <laughs> I think that's just basically how Ben approaches all of my games, and I love it. Um, As I exit the elevator. <laughs> all right, you got your guns, guns drawn. 
All right, so you, the elevator that you guys Gun come drawn. out is right by Lab, uh, th uh, sorry, Lab Two, and you know that Lab Three is off to your left, Lab One is off to your right, and uh, uh, Sanjuro, you get off onto this floor. Something feels strangely familiar. As you look up at the lights in the ceiling, you have this memory of seeing identical lights kind of flashing above you. And then there's the smell of, uh, so there's no smell in here, it's a clean room. But you distinctly have this memory that triggers of smoke and fire and, man, it it's a little unnerving. Eesh. Oh, right. Is that associated with one of these directions? It's, it's, as you kind of, uh, give me just a straight mind roll. I take a couple right. steps down towards three. Are you hesitating? Ooh. Well, that's bad. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. So, so should I, should, here's a question. Should I be playing my second chance on this? Mind roll. Uh, so here's what happens if you don't if you admit if you've mishapped uh, oh, you yeah. are going to be uh, you're going to be uh, very stymied uh, until you take an actual action you know because you just have no like this there's this sense of kind of emotional and temporal vertigo going on all right, well, this might be a good time to play that second chance card. <laughs> so we'll, uh... Well, one is not good. That's the only card that lets you re-roll, otherwise you can start with it, yes. Uh, well, that's still not great, but, uh... What? Mind. I just generated a total of seven. With, with Ooh, a seven. Possibility. Possibility. You can, yeah, you possibility. can spend a possibility. All right, all right. I'll, poss I'll possibility that. You can spend a possibility on a one. All right, well, that gets me uh, so he re four, it whole 19 for a total of 15. With no, a total wait, sorry, of 15. I can't add. Hold on, I can't add. Okay. 14. Still. Okay, so not a, not a uh, good success, but a regular success. Yeah, no, you have a clear image in your mind that the last time you were standing here, the nice clean walls were like being stained with smoke uh, there were scorch marks, bullet holes, and they all, in your memory, all of the bullet holes and the smoke was definitely coming from the right-hand path where Lab 3 lies down the left-hand side of the hall. Well, I am going to loosen my sword in its sheath and take the safety off of my submachine gun. Okay. So he's definitely... And defin proceed to the left. So you're heading to the left, down towards Lab... Uh, Lab three. Yes. Okay. If I'm keeping my in. ear out for lab one. Okay. All right. So you, you, the three of you, and by the three of you, I mean uh, Kano, Sanjuro, and the hard light drone, which eventually is going to need a name. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just saying. Uh, uh, Byron. Byron. <laughs> and it's B dot Y dot R <laughs> dot. Yes. Oh, and I will assume you will come up with that acronym, acronym later. Uh, you guys get to lab three, and the clock is running. You're uh, based off of what Auditor Seventeen, Joe, and Frenchie are doing. You're guessing you've got about three minutes. You, they bought you an extra minute uh, because this is a corporate security team. When they get to where they're going and they don't see anything, they're immediately going to start spreading out and looking for things. So, what's the plan? I'll move quicker. Okay. Well, you're at the, like the lab door. You get there. It's this large. Uh, metal blast door and there's a c control panel on uh, the right and the left Frenchie can you open the door uh, the the hard light drone flashes red because I'm on a different floor oh I'm sorry I'm in the mainframe aren't I uh, or I'm in the, auditor 17 in is in the mainframe I'm in comms you're in right. comms um, never mind auditor <laughs> can you open blinks, the door blinks yellow off yellow off Hello, uh, and I'll, I'll relay it to Auditor 17. 
Okay. So I'll try the meat space manipulation. Okay. Go for it. That's the first option. I have picks, but that probably takes longer. And I could find what electronic lock picks do. Like favored, is it? Oh, it's bonus. Nice. That would be a that'd be a nope. I I get the music coming out of the door though. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 da, da. Um. So yeah. Uh, okay. The hard light drone flashes red flashes again. Flashes red. Uh, game question: What does electronic lock picks give you? Is it favored or is it a bonus? Uh. Let's look it up in the in the. Yeah, I can find I'll it. make it. I'll make it favored. Let's just okay. go with that. Okay. Uh, keep things rolling. Keep, keep it rolling. Yeah. yeah. That's like first aid kit is a favorite thing. It's no bonus. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. That is straight up. I will spend a possibility. And then uh. Because I want to get better. While he rolls this, hey, uh, Joe, tell me when to stop. <laughs> Twenty-three on my stop. electronic lock pick. You want me to cut? Or are you good? Or however it works. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, with a what? I'm sorry. Uh, 22 with electronic lock picks. 22 with electronic lock picks. It takes you about, um, well, 22 is a good success. So uh, you are able to get into the lab. The doors open, a little bit of uh, like dry mist rolls out. And you can see on the inside, there is a large, uh, like the lights start to come on, no one's in here, but you can clearly see something's going on, and you can see that about uh, four meters in, there's a large glass door, or glass windows, that sh overlooks the lab. And inside the lab, there are, on this broad glass and metal table, there are different just things on there, and there are uh, com uh, robotic arms that are, um, some of them are shooting out. Uh, they're 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 delivering. Yeah, they're delivering high energy uh, beams. And uh, Kano, I do you have any science ads? No. All right. So they are definitely delivering um, beams. If my hard light is seeing this along with him, can I roll? Yeah, you can give me a science roll. Uh, uh, and then we're going to jump back here in a second. But let me finish describing this for uh, Mr. Furious and uh, and Mark here. I would say as soon as we come in, we can shut the door. Yes, you can definitely so, shut the door behind you. 16. 16? Yeah. Uh, what it seems to be is they're, they're uh, subjecting to whatever this is, whatever these things are, to various high-intensity energy wavelengths. Infrared, ultraviolet, sonic, different things to see how they react. And every so often, you guys see this flash of red and blue light that comes off of these. And what you can clearly see, Kano, on the table is there seems to be some sort of amulet that looks like it's got wings on it. You can see that there is a sword blade that has no hilt, like the hilt and the uh, um, uh, the cross piece have been broken off. I know who has that. There is a small locket uh, that's kind of laying out there. And then there is a... Uh, uh, That is uh, that is it on the table, but off to the side, you see uh, there's a side table. There looks to be like a computer screen where somebody's been taking notes, and next to it, there is something that looks roughly tome-shaped, uh, but uh, there is kind of like a sticky, waxy paper that's kind of enfolding it. Uh, and it seems to be, like, you can see the book seems to be leaking something into the rectums. However, back like on... Nutritional fluids? Yeah, it's definitely leading, leading nutritional uh, fluids. Um, do, do, do. Let me just do one quick thing. So for the amulet blade lock it in a tome. At a tome. Uh, uh, do I know what a book is? Yeah, you totally okay. know what a book is. So... Uh, meanwhile, on floor 12, uh, Joe, as you are gleefully destroying things, uh, Auditor 17 and uh, Frenchie, it, uh, Auditor 17, if you want, you can actually lock the room down. It does have a safe room uh, mode. Uh, but you can hear the doors ding. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, by the way, Mr. Furious, don't worry about it. Uh, 
just, I, I realize you're having uh, some camera issues. I can hear you. Perfect. If you can hear us and we can hear you, we're good with that. By the way, in case you are wondering, right below mm -hmm. me, there is a, there is a poster uh, for tonight's episode. And as all of our posters have been made, uh, I would like to thank uh, Ben Restart here for uh, putting that together for us. It is, uh, we, we always love it. It is just a, an additional little joy of running these, these things. So, um, the elevator doors open and a group of four uh, uh, corporate security come out. Uh, two of them have, and you guys can see this, this through the, the one way. Room, or yeah, they just came out of the elevator. They just came out of the elevator. Okay. Uh, they have, uh, they are wearing uh, the ion armor, uh, and they have Glock nines pulled with uh, electric katanas sheathed over their back, and they are led by um, uh, two people in uh, like full security armor, and uh, they immediately spot Joe because they've been looking at this, and uh, Joe, I'm, I'm pulling this first card. How we're gonna do this is I'm going to run floor 12, then I will run floor 15, and then we'll just kind of keep jumping back and forth. So, uh, floor 12, the card for this round is you are thrown back, heroes go first, villains go second, but they will get a flurry. So flurry means they will get a, two actions this round as opposed to one and the approved actions are taunt or trick. So I'm gonna let you guys start. Uh, Joe, you're in the hallway, you can see these guys. They they draw their glocks, they point them right at you, and they say, drop your weapons, hands on the ground! And he, uh, the guy in charge kind of looks back, secure, secure the VIPs. Uh, I would like to hope that uh... Joe was already aiming directly down the hallway, not necessarily at their elevator, but directly down the hallway. I'll um, allow him for this. And I would like to hope that he had found a, an exterior window and or a portal down that hallway that would say be in medium blast range of the elevator door. So for a possibility, I will totally allow that. <laughs> oh, most assuredly, <laughs> I will spend a possibility. So uh, Joe, all right. Joe, so, may I go? May I go first and make them vulnerable with a trick so that you can? <laughs> Perfect. Let's so do it. I want to pop around the edge of the conference room and fire at Joe close enough that it's possible, but I'm just throwing lead down the direction of of the uh, security people. Now now who's been tricked, Ben? <laughs> the best move in the game. <clears throat> All right, so while he does uh, this, I'll explain what's going on. So my yell, please. He can, you can use trick, taunt, maneuver, or intimidate to make what's called an interaction attack. And essentially, yes. What you're doing is, if you succeed, you can actually make a group, and for each additional person, you take a minus two to your roll, but you can make people or a group uh, easier to hit. So it drops their defenses mm -hmm. by two or four, okay. or you can make them um, it easier for your allies, or you can, you, that's making it easier for your allies to attack them. Or you can like confuse them, basically make them stymied, and they take a minus two, or if you roll well enough, a minus four to their next action. Because um, right in cinema, you know, Torg is a very cinematic game, and, it, and you're, you're able to like, you know, pilot a motorcycle around some sort of walker with a rope attached to it and cause it to crash into the snow. Just hypothetical situation that I just, you know, created. Uh, so what did you get, Auditor 17? I assume I'm down six because I'm I'm multing on on four of them, yep. correct? That is correct. So then then my total is fifteen. Well, um, uh, nerds. So let's see here. Uh, I believe that is a uh, nerds. That is a uh, that is a good success against the the against two of them, and that is a standard success against the other two. But if you would like to, uh, your your you would need a, a 16 in order to get a good success on all of them. I spent my possibility already, so I think, I think I'm think i out. Okay. 
All right, so. so storm is two, or minus four, minus four, and quarter plus or minus two. Minus All right, uh, so as they start, fi as you start firing lead down the hall, they're like, no, we're here to help you, stop, what? <laughs> and uh, they have become uh, vulnerable. Two of them are vulnerable. Two of them are very vulnerable against whatever Joe is about to do. Okay, so. Joe is throwing the explosive bird dart at the window. It's 13 armor piercing two. Okay. And I'm just throwing it at the window. Okay. So I rolled a 21 with my aim. Well, that's, that's an outstanding success. Okay. So, uh, then... I am going to, so that I hope, uh, I'll roll the damage on the window, but then who's ever in the medium blast radius, I'm going to expend two extra shock on path of the wind to blow my opponents, uh, out the window. Do, 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 um, <laughs> Uh, 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 no pressure change. Uh, 50, <laughs> uh, 50 meters back. So hopefully I'll blow out the window and then push some of those troopers directly out the window. <laughs> I haven't frozen, I'm just... <laughs> um, okay. Okay, so it's, it's uh, what did you say the exterior window hall was? Oh, I'm don't worry, I totally, said. it's uh, 14 uh, with four armor, so if it's AP3. Oh, okay. So yeah. I'm gonna armor pierce two, and I'm at 13 plus three bonus die. Uh, Auditor 17, while this is going on, you definitely get a message from the floor that says, do not worry, uh, the CSO, Miss Harani, has arrived. She is heading in your direction. Uh, what'd you get? Oh, oh go ahead. Uh, uh, that comes out to 29 armor piercing two. All right, and so how many shock do you have to expend to, and, and you blow back three of them, how far? Five, zero? 15, 15. Okay, 15, I was like, well, they land uh, safely across the street <laughs> on the parking garage at the same level if it's 50. Oh, wait, I do have to make a test. Okay. I, um, I need to make a standard strength test to blow them back 10 meters. Okay. Uh, give me your standard strength test. So, in case you guys haven't noticed in the chat, uh, four of our five uh, players are using cool new uh, things from the Pan Pacifica book that is being developed, and it is awesome. It is also very interesting. Like, I want to play a bunch of, like, I have like six characters that I've made for Pan Pacifica. <laughs> Path of the Gun and uh, Path of Shadow. So it, it is a standard success, but I would like to go ahead and um, spend a possibility. Okay. And make that a... Good success. Well, uh, with a good success, uh, especially the two vulnerable ones. So the two very vulnerable ones that Auditor 17 has distracted, um, they, uh, you successfully uh, defenestrate them uh, and, and knock them clear out of the window. Uh, the last guy caught in the blast was the closest to you. And so as he hits, he actually manages to grab uh, the edge of the window and actually kicks kip ups into like a handstand and flips back in and you see he looks and he just draws his katana as he looks at you 
Uh, Auditor 17 will just touch base with you again. You got that message uh, from the receptionist that uh, she is leading a, uh, a security team up to escort you off of the premises. Okay, so I'll, I'll hit it and I'll say, you know, be aware you're coming into a hot zone. Be aware you're coming into a hot zone. Okay. Hostels are, you know, and the, yeah. oh, and could I have a card for the for the trick? Oh yeah, you, I, you totally can. Sorry about that. Uh, you have you have flurry now. Oh cool. Uh, yes, all the ampersands you noticed, and uh, you heard him correctly. There are flashback mechanics that are defined in the new Pan Pacifica book, and they're fantastic. And if we get to use them tonight, you will get to see them. Um, floor twelve. Uh, there are now two guys left. One of them has murder in his eyes. Murder at us? No, definitely not Joe? you. You two are like, we're you guys VIPs. are the VIPs. You're yeah. fine. Uh, can, can they even see us because we're in this room? With, uh, they can. They, they know you're in there, okay. and they can see Auditor 17 because he definitely ducked out the window and was like, or out the door and was firing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Auditor 17, are, are we engaging in direct violence against them, or are we maintaining our cover as VIPs. We're about to get kicked out of the building as VIPs. Remember, three came in, so one guy's stuck in the latrine somewhere. <laughs> Greg, did you hear me? Yeah, is, uh, no. he's asking Auditor... Are, oh, go yeah, are, are, we, are we now engaging in direct violence, or are we attempting to maintain our cover as VIPs? I, I think you. I think you are now engaging in direct violence. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, I will uh, duck out then and shoot the guy with murder in his eyes. How okay. Do I How do you do that? Well, what yes. weapon would you like to use? Well, I have a God meter laser, so I would like to introduce him to God. Okay. Uh, that is that is. You're really putting the meat in. Yeah. Oh yeah. Meeting no. God. Uh, so here's what you do. You're going to make a, an energy weapons roll, and uh, tell me tell me what a. <laughs> Sorry. Energy weapon roll? Yep, give me an energy weapon roll. Now remember, at the end of your turn is when you can put one of your cards in play. So you gotcha. don't have access okay. to any of your cards. Your Cosm card can be played at any time. Right. But, all right, what'd you get? Oh, I have plans for my Cosm card. Uh, two, uh, energy weapons, 14. Okay, so a 14 is a standard success. Okay. Uh, if you want to spend a possibility and up it, every every level of success above it gives you an extra bonus die of damage. It's usually five points. Oh, cool. Sure, I got four. Why not? All right, so uh, roll another die and add it in. And add it to that first roll. Yeah. Okay. So add another d20? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And again, if it's less than That's 10, not. it counts as a 10. Uh, and if it is an actual 10 or a 20, it will explode. Okay, 16. And the first roll... So was, I rolled a 15. And, and then what did you roll on the second die? 16. So you got a 31, which is a... Which is a bonus of 10. So what's your total? So 22. All right. So a 22 is a good success. Okay. Is there any AP? Uh, damage. What's no. the damage on your weapon? 15. Okay. So then roll one bonus die of damage. So it's just a D6. And remember, if you get a 6, it's actually a 5 and it explodes. 3. All right, so you got a total of 18. All right. So uh, your God meter laser, uh, there is this it flash down the hallway at the guy standing in front of the window. His helmet has come off during the flip. Long hair just kind of blowing in the breeze. Papers wrapping around his legs. And then he gets hit in the chest with a... You know what doesn't help you soaking? Possibilities when you get knocked out of a 12-story uh, window. Um, <laughs> Thanks for that. I'm, I'm watching. Uh, but, uh, so he would take one wound and two shock. He's going to attempt to soak it. And that's when he makes a reality roll. So he will make a reality okay. roll. If he gets at least a 10, he'll ignore your damage. Okay. Uh, well, he got a, he rolled a two, so we're definitely going to bump that up with one of my beta clearance possibilities. So a 12 is a zero, but he has a reality of 12. So as you hit him, he brings the katana, and it, the, uh, the electrified katana kind of meets the laser, uh, uh, the bolt from your god meter, and it just kind of travels up the uh, arc of the katana into the ceiling, and a light explodes above the sky. Cool. You can put one of your cards into play. Just any one of yep. them? Yep. On floor 15, what are the two of you guys doing? Oh, we haven't seen anyone yet, right? You haven't seen anyone. But uh, Kano closed the door behind you. Um, right. 
and you 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 know that as soon as they figure out that where they were called to is is wrong, they are definitely going to start doing a room to room clear of the floor. Right. So let's grab the eternity shards. Yeah, there's an amulet, a blade, a locket, and a tome. All of it. Do you want to grab the tome? Because that's on a separate table. Sure. The tome was oozing, right? The tome is oozing. It's yeah. wrapped in something, so I would wrap it in something <laughs> yeah, else. It, Let's not yeah, you can see that it's... Is it's, there, is there a, can, a bag in here? I have my briefcase. No, you could put it in Kano's briefcase. <laughs> All right. Well, we put it in the briefcase. I'll take my stuff out. All right. Uh, Sorry, I just, just for no reason whatsoever... Uh, uh, I need you to make a charisma check. I'll go grab the amulet. <laughs> oh, great. Kind of putting him in the briefcase. Oh, charisma. Yep, straight charisma, charisma check. check. All right. <laughs> uh, By the way, can you climb? Because I can climb. I'm All right, well, that's not great. That's a six. I might spend a possibility on that. Okay, you want to spend a possibility on it? Go for it. All right. All right, possibility. Can I see an outside window? Uh, there is no outside window to this lab. The lab. Okay. Yeah, the lab is is what you can. T when you walked through, the doors were really thick. You are pretty convinced that if this lab goes into lockdown, no one's getting in or out. Okay. We'll have to get in the hallway and deal. Right. With so it. I got a fifteen. Uh, you got a fifteen. So when you pick it up, you briefly hear a number of like you can hear like whispers as if the book is talking to you. You get the intense feeling that the book is dangerous. <laughs> but but so is Joe, but we like him. Yeah, I mean so Joe and Malachi, they're all they're all super dangerous. Um but the thing that comes through like you you hear this kind of cacophony of voices and then you hear not the one this one has no soul, and the voices kind of, uh, kind of recede back to a, a dull murmur. That's harsh. Sorry, Andrew. Um, all right, so you guys have have the stuff. Um, are you just heading back to the elevator? We need to head out or find an outside window that we can bust a hole and pull a Joe move. But I have to climb. All right. Uh, I think we should just. I think we should just go back to the elevator. We've done this in how much time? You've done this in like you're like ninety seconds into this at this point. Yeah. I, I have a question for um, the officer. Will my psionic updraft power allow either us to reach the fifteenth or them to float back down to the twelfth? We are coming down. His bike but is going to the elevator. Yeah, I th I'd say yes, but. I think we're, you know, getting us all together on a floor, given the incoming, is probably a good idea. But I have a brilliant plan. Excellent. A plan, well, a plan so brilliant that so, if you put a, a tail on it, you could call it a fox. And Jiro, can you carry the briefcase? Because I really need to have both guns free. All right, I will put, carry the briefcase in one hand and draw, and have my uh, electric katana in the other. Okay. But my plan is to try to I have a number of flash grenades oh good if we need them right. okay and these are built around a bright burning magnesium core they are which 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 means that they're gonna burn through a lot of stuff they are they, are, so, they definitely are so I want to go over to lab one slash open the both control panels, and I'm going to set a grenade in each of those. Okay, so you're going on a delay. So... On a delay. <laughs> okay, and so we're going to we're going to set those, and then we're going to and then and you're going to try to set them off so that they go off as we're going as we get it, the elevator closes. Okay, so uh, you 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 see that when you get to the elevator, he heads down to lab one. Drawing the katana. Are you going with him or are you holding the elevator? I, I will go with him. All right. I will tell you guys what happens on the next round because, you know, as you said. Question. Are the guards considered wards? Because I have a power that works against wards. 
Um, you're not sure. So, uh, some of them are reality rated. Some of them are orcs. Okay. I will let you know if they show okay. up what you can do. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to slash open the uh, control panels here. Uh, yes. Okay. I will come back to you here in a second. Meanwhile, back on the first floor, or on floor 12, uh, they op- one of them opens fire on uh, Frenchie. And uh, Frenchie, so your dodge is 12. And because you are firing from a door, you have cover. Ooh. So you are you have two extra points of armor against against the shot. Because the, the guy in the lead who was focused on, uh, who didn't actually move, and he was focused on Joe, sees the god meter flash and just <laughs> reflexively tries to double tap into, it's a, it's a good uh, instinct. into your chest. Uh, so he got a 24 on the die. So that is a... Um, a fire combat of 21 so that is a good success against you so your armor right now is 14 okay against against this he gets one bonus die of damage so the the dodge is my target number to his hit target you. it's like your ac okay yeah um all right so with your 14 uh he hits you for uh two shock it hits your armor it's a little stunning uh, so if your shock ever hits zero, you're knocked out. Okay. Uh, so you just take two shock. You can, if you want, spend a possibility to try and negate it, but there's really no reason to. Shock comes back at the end of the fight. So. Okay. Cool. Uh, the other good. guy definitely charges. Uh, he charges right at Joe. He runs past you in a blur of movement, and with his electric katana, he is going to try to uh, decapitate or delimb. Uh, Joe. So, Joe, what is your uh, melee Joe. defense, please? Uh, my melee defense is a nine. Is a nine? Uh, nine. Okay. Wait a minute. Um, oh, melee or unarmed? Uh, it's melee. Oh. Uh, uh, well, you can use unarmed if you want to try to. Uh, so, the electric katana hits you uh, up ten. Uh, you hits you with a 25, so that is definitely an outstanding success. Uh, as the blade comes down, uh, your armor is only... Uh, oh, he, he cuts through your armor, because uh, he has AP2 on this thing. So you have seven. seven. Oh, good lord. Um, 25... Minus seven is 17. That'll be three wounds and six shock as he brings the electric katana from your left shoulder and tries to cut it all the way down to your right hip. We shall see. I wish I had my helmet on so I could more accurately say something like, it was my arrogance, not the sword. I did the damage. <laughs> Are you going to try and soak it, sir? Yes. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't want to take three wounds just first round? Because they get a second attack. Oh, man. Okay, so. Uh, so that's a. Uh, 14 is a plus. One. One. Yep. Uh, oh, that's terrible. Uh, yeah, so I'll have to spend another. Oh no 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 no! Wait, I will use my possible uh, my willpower that I put in to make it a standard success. All right, a standard so success. Be two wounds in. Yeah, you'll take two wounds, but you'll ignore all of the shock. <laughs> However, he okay. follows it up with a second attack because uh, they have flurry this round. And as you watch, this guy brings uh, a second uh, uh, sword strike kind of coming up from the left hip to the right shoulder, marking marking Joe with an X across across his chest. Uh, so that'll be two wounds in four shock, Joe, on the second one. I'm going to need another reality roll from you, buddy. I apologize. Like, no, I don't apologize. I'm the GM. This is the way the game works. Uh, uh, the second shot hits you 
uh, for a wound and two shock. Okay. So you can spend a possibility to soak. And what that does is that lets you make a reality roll. And if you get at least a 10, you'll ignore all of the damage. Sure, let's do that. So you spend one just to make the roll. Yeah, okay. but you can still spend one if you roll really bad. Yeah, if you okay. need to. Okay. Okay, so that is a, a 20 with modified. So you'll ignore everything. Yep. Three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, I still took two. 18. Is two you still have two wounds. Five. I see. 18 is oh, plus sure. five. So you're so reality roll. Two and really good. And I'm rolling what? Oh, reality. Oh, reality. oh fantastic. So 15. Just a flush wound. There you go. All right. So you managed to kind of duck back just in time so that the blast. Uh, the, the nine millimeter shells kind of go through the doorway, but not you. Okay. The new action is they regroup. Heroes will go first, villains will recover two shock, and taunt is the approved action. Uh, but we're gonna start with we're gonna start with uh, floor fifteen. So uh, Sanjuro, you and Kano get to the door. You cut the thing open with your grenades ready to Are we considering combat to play cards? Yeah, you really yeah. anything. Yeah. You still have to put cards in play. Okay. Uh, so, All right. uh, what were you going to say, Mr. Furious? Um, I, well, I want to put Seize Initiative in play, then, if we're in combat. You are. All right, time. so you've got Seize Initiative in play. What do you have in play, Mark? Master plan. All right. Uh, so, uh, you, you slice the control panels. You have your grenades set up. The doors open up, and there's lights on in this. There is a small uh, Chinese woman in a, in a lab coat. And she's got some sort of data pad and a, and a stylus. And she is walking around making little marks on uh, a tablet as if she is... And, and you can see that there are these glass tubes that go from floor to ceiling. And there are, there are tubes that are coming into these things, cables that are coming into these things. These are lit from underneath. And each one of the dozen tubes... Um, is there's something floating in the tubes. You can see like a, a, bre a breath mask, you can see bubbles every so often kind of going. It looks like there may have been 14 or 15 tubes in here, but there's like plastic wrap on the far side that kind of extends from floor to ceiling. And as the door opens, she turns around and- Poor Enduro. What was that? Poor, poor Enduro. Uh, she looks right at you, uh, Senjiro, and she says, uh, uh, Shishan? Is that you? And it's really weird to be called 13. <laughs> and as, as you guys kind of take it all in, you're standing there with the grenades in your hand, you realize that every one of those 12 tubes holds a U. You're putting the romance card into play, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was offering it. In, 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 I was proffering it in trade. That, I'm that not sure, but I think this is my mom, so that's, uh, that's, let's not go there. <laughs> well, there's so, eight kinds of love in Greek. So you see, you see, that's what you, you guys see. What are you guys doing? <laughs> I'm throwing the grenades. <laughs> All right, so you chuck both of the grenades in. Her eyes go wide, and she looks like she's going to try and leap into the back half of the room. What are you doing, Kano? You're going to shoot at her? All right, go for it, and you guys will still have enough time in this round to get back to the elevator. And, of course, pass of the gun, I will double tap, which allows me to basically increase the, the attack, damage. Uh, the attack roll. Okay. Then we're gonna drop back down to the 12th floor. Like literally, we're gonna drop back down to the 12th floor. Twenty-two. <laughs> you uh, get an outstanding success. Okay. You know, it's not reality rated. This scientist, <laughs> and you—you you barely hear uh, Sanjiro. The they actually describe it as like movie Hollywood movie silence. Yeah, you got the little just the puff there. Of air. Arlington Assassin nine millimeters. Nice. Ooh, infinity. And 
infinity. So that's uh, thirty AP two. Yeah, she's dead. She hits the ground and kind of slides in. The grenades uh, are on a delay, so as the doors close and you make it back to the elevator, you both hear kind of this muffled explosion as as the grenades go off, and all of a sudden, uh, halogen gas starts flooding down as the doors to the elevator close and you start heading down. On floor 12, let's start with Auditor 17. What are you doing with your action, sir? Uh, first, I'm going to play the Inspire card that I had in the pool so that everybody can have their choice of a possibility or just draw from the Destiny deck. What would you like? We'll start with you. Uh, I, I'll take a draw from the Destiny deck. Uh, you've got leadership. Cool. Uh, Mr. Furious, what do you want? I'll take a draw, please. Uh, you get alertness. Mark, a draw. You get a... Po oh, you want a possibility? Possibility. Man. Oh, Okay. <laughs> I burn through these things. Uh, I think I will also just take a possibility. All right, and then uh, Ben, what do you need? Possibility. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, I'm leading. I need a possibility. <laughs> oh, these wounds hurt so much. <laughs> so he's so at minus two to everything that he does. Like the final total, every wound is a penalty to your oh, final roll. No. Yeah. Okay. Fun times. All right. So what are you doing, on under seventeen? Oh, so the situation is we've got the person who's shooting at the at. At Frenchie and the one who's trying to uh, shashimi Joe over there. Yes, and you have you have something coming up in the elevator. Yeah. Right. I will I will uh, deal with that in a second. So I will try to shoot the person who's going to dice my friend. All right. Uh, their dodge is at thirteen. I'll just toss that out there. All right. Ooh. Yeah, I'll risk a possibility. Thank you. I'm putting yes. alertness into my, into my pool. Yeah. Okay. I'll put leadership into my pool. So that's a... Fortunately... So that's eight and... Fire combat. So, 21 total. All right, that is a good success. All right. Be nice to me, Dice. <laughs> well, you know. So that's a total of 16. A total of 16 versus... Uh, I think that's great. All right, so they will take a wound and two shock. I'm going to spend a possibility to try and soak it. Nope. It's a mishap. Uh, so you you put a shot right through this guy's head, and it snaps to the side, and he slumps down to the ground. Yeah. Dang, another bonus I have to sign for for that family. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just for the security cameras. Uh, Frenchie and uh, Joe, what are you guys doing? It's just the one guy left? There's just the one guy sure. left. Joe, go for it. Uh, what are you planning on doing? Because I I have an attack, but it is going to be a, a multi-interaction attack. Um, so if you could make him vulnerable, that would benefit me, but it doesn't matter. If you want to taunt him and draw his his fire, that could make him vulnerable. Oh, can I can I taunt and then also hold something? Can you hold something for a trigger? No. So like you take okay. your turn and so you can taunt him and shoot him. Yeah, you can do okay. a minus two penalty. Can I tell how close the elevator is? Sure. Uh, there's one elevator that's on fifteen that now just hit fourteen. Okay. And the other elevator that you can see is on six and just hit seven. Okay, and and so that's not going to be here for a, a minute or so. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. Sure. I will. Um. So how how do I make him vulnerable? So you I would make do... it. You could if you do a taunt. Uh -huh. You would actually get a destiny card if you're successful. Oh. Okay. But you could also like maneuver by like charging him and knocking him out, or like throwing something at him. You could trick him and be like, look out, or you know. Um. Uh. Well, my taunt is not great. 
So <laughs> you can do other things to make him vulnerable. You just get a bonus card if you can taunt him. I'll let you know, gotcha. their taunt is not great either. <laughs> uh, so basically, you would need to you would need to hit a uh, a nine is a is the target number. <laughs> they're, they're not great. Sure, I will. Dude, you should, uh, I'm all one one trick. Uh, sure, I will. I will taunt him. Okay, give me the taunt. So it's one roll for both skills, whatever you're trying well, to do. Well, no, he's, he's not, just I think he's just doing the straight taunt, right? Yeah, just, not, just okay, straight taunt. Okay, yeah, just straight taunt. What'd you get? Uh, six, which is a minus four, so four. Do you want to spend a possibility? I, I think I probably do. All right. So remember, that's always a minimum of ten. You can add it to your... Yeah. So ten so plus... Six, so sixteen, so, so three, so uh, eleven. So eleven is 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 enough to make him vulnerable. Okay. So what? How do you taunt him? Oh, how do I taunt him? Yeah. Um. Uh, they're not down here yet, right? Nope, not yet. Um. Where's the rest of your party? Yeah, it's. Uh, I'll just look at him and say, "It's just you now," <laughs> and then I will uh, just kind of step to the side and gesture to, to Joe, okay. like, like shielding his approach and then stepping aside right as he, he comes up. All right, Joe, what are you doing? The guy's definitely vulnerable. Oh, well, so I'm, I'm glad that you said it's just you now because I look at him and go, I look at him and I look at the slumped body on the floor with the katana that just slashed me. Yeah, blood kind I of seeping out from under the I plates of your arm. Slowly Look back into his eyes and say, and we're trading partners. <laughs> and I'm going to multi-action, that's a taunt, okay. to him. Oh, by the way, here's your... But also, I am going to uh, air vehicles, my power armor, straight out the window. Okay. Uh, hoping that if I can get a, um, a, a, a an outstanding taunt, he will chase me enough to just fall out the window. I mean, the other thing you could do is you could you could do a, if you want to do a maneuver to kind of do the flying tackle and take him out the window with you. Well, so I think grapple rules are strength. In this case, if you're just flying at him, I'd allow it just to be a maneuver. It's up to you, though. Okay, well, can I, uh... <laughs> can I air com or, uh, air vehicles against his strength? Sure. Which is? Ten. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Evil chuckle. That looks like it was a ten or a twenty. I've that got glory in play. Okay, wait. Okay, All okay. right. If so another alternate group wait, scores a glory, I'm just gonna like switch to one of the alternate groups. <laughs> it's only it's only thirty four. Okay. But why wouldn't I juice it? Okay. So that's a forty nine. Um, I don't have anything that'll Again. take it higher than okay. that. Okay, so a 49 is a plus 13. I'm okay. going to assume so that you got an outstanding success. Well, let's see. That's that's 24 on the air vehicles. Okay. And uh, uh, he's also a 24 on my taunt. And he's vulnerable. So, all right. Uh, so your, your card that you get is drama. You hit this guy, uh, Auditor 17 in Frenchie. You just see him kick on his jets and fly at this guy, grab him, and the two of them leave. They have, uh, Joe has left the building. <laughs> uh, there are no villains right now, so we're gonna stop combat right now until, I mean, you've got about 30 seconds. The doors to the elevator open. Uh, Kano and uh, a very haunted looking uh, uh, Sanjuro are there. What do you guys do? So do we, do we get ready for let's shock? go. Uh, not yet. Okay. It's got to be the end of the scene. Oh yeah. What's the plan? <clears throat> let's go. Okay. Hey. So 
Time to go. The last thing I want to do with the computer terminal go for is it. get there and shut the elevators down. All right. And <laughs> play play some insipid music like boots. Your boots are made for walking on a loop in the elevator. Uh, and then give me we can a computer leave. roll for that. Can it just be that these boots were made for walking? Right, yeah, exactly. These <laughs> boots were made. With, and it's, it's amazing how you put that needle skip in there. Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's some right. high level hacking. I'll spend the possibility. <laughs> and since I have the ability that I get to with my hyper focus, I really want this to succeed, so I'm up on my mind task <laughs> for this. So it um, now it pays off. gives you an, a, a free extra roll. Free roll, so that's 1731. <laughs> that's a total of 47. <laughs> All right. Plus 13. So, yeah, so that's plus 13 and 1326. All right. Uh, so. This is going to be a player's call. So Auditor 17, let me just ask. So you stop the elevator. You put the thing on loop. How badly do you piss off everyone in here for when the horsemen show up next week? Like, are they... Is um, this, the law of vengeance is one of the laws in play. Play bloodbath. <laughs> So I I think I am, uh, yeah I'm I'm really pissing them off. A, they're as part of my original job. They cooked these books so badly. They did. They, they are they are complete clowns. So I have to have to make them pay for it. So I think what I'll do is, I'll I'll have that boots are made for walking in the background. So they got players call. I'm going to have her address to the board of directors of their company, where she explains how everything is clean and perfect. And just let her hear her own words over and over again, along with the boots made for walking. One out of one speaker, the other out of the other speaker. Uh, then we can take off. All right. So how do you guys escape the building? Like, what's the plan here? I know that uh, one of you has a motorcycle. <laughs> so how tall, high is the parking garage on the other side? Uh, the parking garage on the other side is 10 stories. It's run. 12. You okay. can fly out the Where whole the uh, okay. with one person on your motorcycle, and I have climbing gear, so I can just You're rappel down. And I, can... All right. I, would, I would like to give um, Frenchie, not Frenchie, sorry, Tenjuro on the motorcycle. I'll play leadership, give him flurry and adrenaline to give him a couple shots at making this motorcycle stunt. Okay. Cool. Flurry and adrenaline. All right. All right. All right. And my. And my motorcycle, my trademark vehicle, means I am favored on this roll. All right, so here's my here's my question. You take a One, passenger. Are you you can take a passenger, and are you taking the briefcase? Well, as a passenger, you can hold that. I, uh, I am take I. Mission was to recover the the Eternity shards. I'm taking the Eternity shards. Okay, just the. Whoever else has the rest of. I'm. I'm oh, enjoy, else, I'd enjoy being a passenger because uh, I am not a climber. <laughs> All right. Well, come on. All right. right. So I turn around and say, say the order. Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> you can have a possibility for that one. Uh, I cannot climb. All right. You have a fairly good time. I'll slide in behind. All right. All right. While you go, go ahead and give me the roll, Sanjiro. Uh Meanwhile, I... in the night, <laughs> Joe is flying triumphantly and then just lets this guy go. <laughs> Where he joins the other three people who were blown out the window. All right, so Auditor 17 gets on your back. You've got the briefcase. What's the, All give right. me the roll. Well, right now we're at a 14 and I'm spending a possibility on that. Okay. You guys can all hear the sounds of sirens starting to like get closer to the building through the windows that have been blown out. Uh, some of those sirens are ended by uh, Flying Sniper Joe. <laughs> All right, so I currently have a land vehicle total of 21. All right, that is a good success. If you can get three more points, you will have an outstanding success, and I will let you narrate this. You count the cards? All right, well, in that case, I'll play that adrenaline card. All and right. push it up to push it up to it. 
Mr. So, Furious, what does it look like? All right. Well, I back the uh, back the we back the uh, motorcycle back up to as far as back as it can go, and I, first I pull first I pull out my uh, my uh, Kyogo 144 SMG and I shoot out the window in front of us, <laughs> and then we then I put it around and we buckle and I say hold on, and then I start revving up the engine. This is like. So the back wheel is spinning as hard as it can go, and so it's like we're like this is slipping sideways. Then I let her rip, and just as we come up to the window, there is a, from the a cubicle wall that has been laid laid down on the floor in such a way it provides a slight upward ramp to give us a boost over into the uh, into the air, and we soar across the across the street and land very 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 firmly. Yep. Very firmly, on, on the three stories, two stories down, on the parking garage, and then we're burning it down the down this down the uh, ramps all, all the right. way. Are you so you have the option of waiting for the rest of your team or getting heading right tomorrow to uh, deliver uh, the eternity shards? What would you like to do? Well, I think the correct thing to do is to wait and see if everyone else gets out. All right, uh, but we'll wait on the street. Okay, the so wait you, on the street. You spiral yeah. down. Uh, Joe is providing uh, cover fire. How do the two of you get out of the building? Can you ride your drone? No, it's a hard no, light. No, my drone is tiny. So I have something called Comte's shock knocks. Yeah. Which discharge, uh, well, it discharges electricity. Is that, can I, can I, basically what I want to do is, is run at the same gap as the motorcycle just went out and as I as I leave just slam them into the ground. No, it's more like a, having a taser. It's more like having a taser? Yeah. You Shoot. give me your climb roll if you want to try and... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I have climbing gear. You can attempt anything unskilled as long as it's not a bolded skill. So you can attempt mm -hmm. climbing down and with his climbing, climbing gear. climbing allows you to use dex instead of strength if I remember the rule right. There's normally a strength check. So do you have a higher dex than strength? Uh, no, I have a higher strength. So you can just so make a straight strength, strength roll. Strength. Just, yeah. I, I will just use a... All right, give me your climbing gear as the two of you start to rappel out of the side of the Nanjing Court building. Okay. Um, I'm going to play drama. It says play this card as a possibility. Yes, so you can actually play that card and a possibility on top of it if you okay. want. So can I wait until after I roll? Yeah. You roll that one and then yeah. add. Okay. This normal as far as uh, this is a this is actually a hard test because it is a even with climbing gear it's a sheer building down. So deep. Uh, yeah. So the climbing gear I almost bought some twenty one. Yeah. That, but that's okay. So what's a what's a hard? Fourteen. Fourteen is what you need. Okay. So if if I roll a one on a possibility, it's still it a still it counts as a ten. Still counts as a ten. Yeah. Okay. Um, then that's an 18. All right. 22. All right, so the two of you quickly yeah. descend, meet up with the rest of the group, and about an hour later, you are back at the Delphi Council safe house where Maru waits for you. And as you walk in, you can see that there's a, an eclectic group of people behind them. There's a woman in a monster hunter duster. Uh, there is a, a young woman, definitely from the cyber papacy, with cybernetic eye, arm, and, uh, and deck. Uh, there is a strange man uh, who looks a little haunted in the eyes, uh, but has like like weird, almost pulpy like uh, uh, gear on him. And there is a woman with a domino mask, a large hat, and a duster and twin guns. She's like, did you get it? Uh, can I interrupt this real quick and play Feud? You want to play feud? Ah, sure. What does it do? Uh, someone is out to get your hero. A nondescript bystander might recognize him for some past misdeed or avenge. Oh, I've foe, got this. Might stalk him from the shadows. The foe might attempt an ambush, frame him for some crime or offense, or simply tarnish his reputation. Gain one to three possibilities depending on the strength of the foe. Uh, yes, you can have three <laughs> possibilities <laughs> because <laughs> as we draw this to a quick close. The, the screen fades to black. Six hours later, flashes up. 
And the elevator door. Oh, did you want to do something? Sorry, Ben. No, no, I'm just saying it was Lapis. Oh, it is Lapis. It's totally yeah. Lapis. Uh, we did a job for Lapis. <laughs> the doors to the, like, it, the, as the camera fades back in, the elevator door is on the first floor, and you can just see there's blood that is starting to leak out of the elevator. And the door opens up, and there are six corporate security guards lying dead. And this woman walks out, and you can see she is, like, clawed at the side of her face and her ears, and she has drawn blood. And she looks at the waiting paramedics, the corporate paramedics, and the corporate security guards. She says, find out who that auditor was. And we'll bring that to a close. Guys, thank you so much. I hope, did you guys have fun? Yo. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's good. That's it fun. was a nice and simple run. That was, by the way, <laughs> The most brilliant amount of play. I run a lot of shadow runs, so I was very excited about doing this. And I just need to say, out of all of the decades of running games, that might have been the most smoothly <laughs> any corporate run has ever gone. So well done. Uh, Chad, thank you for joining us. Uh, Greg, Ben, Greg, Mark, Josh, thank you all for joining us. As always, thank you to our amazing producer who manages all of the technical side of things, keeps me informed of the chat. Chat, you guys are spectacular. I do hope to invite some of you guys back for the Pan Pacifica arc at various points to do little guest stars as the horsemen next week have arrived in Pan Pacifica. As I mentioned several weeks ago, we will be joined uh, by Becca, who will again be playing Lapis for this arc. Ben is already fuming, fuming at this revelation. So we will see how she's that goes. Security chief? No, no, she's she's gonna play Lapis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, you though have definitely made a feud with the Nanjing CSO, one Ms. Harani. She will be after the horsemen, aware of their actions, and will be coming back from them. Who knows, maybe Bureau G will be called upon again to help rescue. Let's be honest, the horsemen have needed a lot of rescuing over this, this <laughs> campaign. So maybe maybe there will be a rescue game. But I will do my best to uh, let you guys know when I can have guest stars uh, come back into this next arc. Until next time, check out all the other great shows on the Ulysses International channel. Uh, there's a ton of uh, material on Torg, Fading Suns, uh, myth, both the board game and the role playing game. Every Thursday, Ulysses Worlds goes up, which is a just a new show, kind of keeping everyone updated on what cool stuff is going on at uh, uh, at Ulysses. Also, check out Iconic Production. That's where uh, we run our games. Josh runs the game every Friday night. Uh, fifth edition game, the most aptly titled campaign of all time. It gets worse. Uh, it's always entertaining, but it does get worse. And follow Ulysses here on Twitch. Follow them on YouTube. If you're watching it on YouTube, uh, check them out on social media. Uh, go and find us on social media and like the poster uh, for Bureau G that was produced again by uh, the illustrious Ben. And, and we will see you all on Thursday for a follow-up uh, to the Fading Suns game. We can finally find out what happens with Tag and Gregor and uh, Lucia and the crew of the old boy. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, stay gaming. I am JM, your GM, and this has been our very first Bureau G game. Have a good one. Bye. We'll see you on Thursday, and we'll be back next week with more Torque.